guys, welcome again to your own YouTube channel, Ask Your Gynecologist. I am Dr. Sonal Parihar. As usual, I have come back with a new topic uh, requested by you all. And today's topic is premature ovarian failure. That means ovary fails and stops working before the age of 40. The normal age of menopause in our country is 45 to 55. That is the normal average age when the lady stop, uh, stops menstruating because her ovaries they stop working. The follicles stop produce, uh, getting produced and the ovary undergoes atresia. Means the size of the ovary starts decreasing, the follicles they start dying and the hormones does not secrete. So that is the normal age. But when it happens before the age of 40, it is called premature ovarian failure. Now before I start the topic, let me just thank you all for the tremendous response you have given to the channel. We are almost up to 8 lakhs and I am waiting to become 1 million family. So thank you very much. Now there are three ways to contact me if you want to have prescription or have second opinion from me. One is Talkwise app. Now this is working very well. Every day so many patients are getting connected. It is an application, online application which you have to download from your mobile play store. Then you have to insert my pin that is C2TXJ. I have given a helpline number just in case you do not get an OTP. Now if you are sitting in India, you have an Indian mobile number. I can call you through this application, not directly from my mobile. But I can call you, you can consult me, you can send me your reports and I can send you prescription. Second way to contact me is whenever I go live on this channel and the other channel, Dr. Sonal's Answers, you can ask your questions there and then by just typing the question in a box and then paying with your debit card or credit card. Now that is a payment which goes to the YouTube and that will help you getting an answer there and then because that question flashes on the screen. When I go live, I do not answer the questions on the live session. I do not read your questions. I just answer the questions which were asked in the previous sessions, the questions that I have gathered from the previous chat. Okay. Now the third way to contact me, the best way is to come to my hospital. You can take an appointment with my secretary so that you are sure that when you come here, I am here in the hospital. I am not out of station and that is the best way. Many patients are actually coming every day and I really appreciate this. Thank you very much. Now coming back to the topic, premature ovarian failure. As I said, when the ovary stops working at the age of say less than 40, generally the average age is 25, it has been seen 25 is the age when premature ovarian failure sets in. Now what are the causes, why does this happen? Causes have been divided broadly into six categories. One is genetic, now the genetic may be because of fragile X syndrome which is a genetic syndrome in which the two out of the two X uh, sex chromosomes in the lady, one of the X is not working well and it is fragile, it breaks early in life and then the patient goes into premature menopause. The other second genetic disease commonly seen is X0 syndrome which is Turner syndrome. Again, this lady only has single X chromosome, the other one is absent, there is no Y, there is no X. So she has different features, you can easily make out that this particular lady is probably a Turner syndrome lady and such patients will have premature menopause. The second category is autoimmune disease. Now the autoimmune disease, uh, generally it has been seen that certain antibodies they develop in the body against your own tissues, against, against your own cells like autoimmune thyroiditis against the thyroid hormone, then Addison's disease in which the antibodies they develop and attack your own adrenal glands, such patients they end up having premature ovarian failure. Third category is a metabolic category, metabolic uh, problems like uh, digestion problems and most commonly seen metabolic disorder is PCOS. Now we have had tremendous discussion on PCOS. I have made four videos on PCOS. If you have not seen, go through them. Uh, they are very detailed videos. The PCOS what happens is they already have metabolic problem. Insulin is high, insulin resistance is there and then if, you, if they undergo surgical treatment in the form of ovarian drilling and the surgeon does it uh, like uh, more than what is required then sometimes they might end up in ovarian, uh, premature ovarian failure. Now that does not mean that you, are, you should just say no to pre, uh, ovarian drilling because some patients they really benefit from ovarian, ovarian drilling. Now what is ovarian drilling? Laparoscopic ovarian drilling means you make a keyhole in the abdomen and you go and puncture the ovary because it has so many cysts that they are the thick the wall is so thick that these eggs are not getting released and such patients they generally do benefit with ovarian drilling but the surgeon has to be cautious and it just depends what kind of patient it is so sometimes these PCOS uh, patients might end up in a uh, premature ovarian failure fourth category is um, environmental problems environmental problems like environmental toxins you might be exposed to some chemicals depending on where you are living or you might be consuming caffeine, nicotine, alcohol, drugs, all these things are toxins and they will basically harm your body. Then again, idiopathic. 
that is the fifth category idiopathic means we do not know why it happens idiopathic the name is suggests that we do not know now there was no cause no genetic no metabolic no environmental so now you have to be careful that you do not uh, let stress overpower you because stress and anxiety are the main causes main idiopathic causes which lead to uh, development of less follicles and lead to ovarian failure so just beware stress is a major factor of ovarian failure and this has been proved in animal studies studies have been con uh, conducted on rats and there has been tremendous re uh, release of all these uh, markers which are which tend to increase in premature ovarian failure patients so it has been proved that yes stress plays a role now the last category is iatrogenic Iatrogenic, as the name indicates, means that some treatment from the doctor has caused ovarian failure. Now, this treatment can be in the form of chemotherapy, radiotherapy, these are used for cancer patients, or it can be in the form of surgical treatment. Now, surgical treatment means either, either the ovaries have been removed completely, so that is called castration, so that means whatever age the ovary was removed, obviously the patient undergoes surgical menopause suddenly. But sometimes, even in the case of hysterectomy, when the uterus is removed and the ovaries are preserved, they are not removed. Even then, 25% of the ladies will end up in premature ovarian failure within 6 months. That means within 6 months of surgery, even if the ovaries are left inside, the ovaries will stop working. And in 3 years, 40-50% to 50 ladies will stop uh, or will undergo menopause because their ovaries stop working. Now why does this happen? This happens because during hysterectomy, whenever the uterus is removed, the blood supply is cut off. So sometimes 80% of the blood supply of ovary is also cut off even though the surgeon is very careful not to hamper the ovary but the blood supply is kind of common so when we clamp when we cut then some blood supply of the ovary is also hampered so nowadays surgeons do not remove ovaries for ladies who are less than 55 or 60 because ovaries are supposed to work till then they keep producing hormones little bit of hormone which is required for your bones your heart your brain and all right so these are the six causes now how does the doctor diagnose it when you go to the doctor you tell the doctor that i'm not menstruating I'm not able to conceive, I feel a lot of uh, hot flushes, very uh, warm feeling in my skin. So all these symptoms will make the doctor suspicious that you might be suffering from premature ovarian failure. So the doctor will first do a pregnancy test on you just to confirm that you're not pregnant. Then there will be certain hormonal tests which just to rule out that uh, it is not some other kind of ovarian, uh, sorry, some other kind of hormonal disturbance like in the form of TSH might be high, prolactin might be high, then you might be having PCOS, so all these tests will be done. Then when he does, uh, when the doctor will tell you to get an FSH done, uh, polymer stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone that is LH and estrogen, then probably the diagnosis will be made because in premature ovarian failure, FSH and LH will be high, estrogen will be low because your ovaries have stopped working and none of the hormone therapy externally given works because your ovaries will not respond, the ovaries are dead. So that is what it means, the premature ovarian failure, now if the doctor does an ultrasound, the doctor will see that there are, there are probably no follicles, antral follicular count, AFC, which you normally ask what is AFC, is antral follicular count, normally in a young patient, in a patient who is menstruating, who is ovulating, there will be certain follicles seen in both there will be a dominant follicle as well but in menopausal ladies there will be no follicles very small tiny follicles as if the ovaries are dying so this is what the picture we get the other tests that can be done will be genetic testing like karyotyping just to rule out it's not an x0 syndrome or it is a fragile x syndrome or certain genetic markers so this is how the doctor will diagnose now what are the risks first of all infertility Yes, if you are having premature ovarian failure, obviously your ovaries will not ovulate. But again, it is not 100% that you will never ovulate. Now, there have been certain cases reported in the literature, 5 to 10 was very rare that sometimes suddenly one of the ovaries released an egg and that was captured by the fallopian tube and the sperm met it and it, the patient conceived. So it is very difficult. Nothing is 100% in, in biology, in medical science. If we tell a patient you can never conceive, we never do that because we know that sometimes some miracle might happen. Something might change in our body. So yes, it is very difficult for a patient of premature ovary failure to undergo um, uh, pregnancy or to menstruate but certain cases 5 to 10 percent have seen that suddenly she starts menstruating just once maybe because when you undergo menopause even you know that uh, when you're undergoing menopause it just doesn't stop suddenly it might become irregular you might just menstruate tw twice or thrice in a year so that is why the definition says that unless you stop menstruating for one year you should not consider yourself to be menopause 
Similarly, in a case of premature ovarian failure, she might just start menstruating in between, she might just ovulate one in between and she might just get pregnant. So there is no hard and fast rule that yes, she can never conceive. So first danger will be infertility, second will be osteoporosis because estrogen hormone is very very protective for the bones. So if you are suffering from osteoporosis, you will have to consult an orthopedic surgeon. Then other problems, if you have seen my video on uh, menopause, menopause part 1, part 2, part 3, it was uploaded one year back. So I have discussed in detail all the symptoms. So all these symptoms will start uh, bothering you like heart problems, hypertension, vaginal problems, dryness, um, passing too much urine, uh, itching in the vagina, then uh, brain problems like uh, difficulty in concentrating, amnesia, dementia, depression, anxiety, all these cases. So for that you need treatment. What is the treatment of premature ovarian failure? Well, there is nothing like ovarian transplantation. Many patients, they ask me that there are so many transplantations. Why can't you transplant my ovary? Well, so far science has developed that we have just succeeded in transplanting a uterus. In India, just last year, the first surgery was done in which the uterus was transplanted and the team came from abroad. So basically in the western world, yes, they have started with uterine transplantation, but yet ovaries have not been proved to be transplanted. So if you undergo premature ovarian failure, there is no way that the ovaries can be become alive again. But yes, very rarely it has been seen to get reversed. Very rarely it was noted in the literature that the patient was told that you will never conceive, you will never menstruate, your ovaries are dead. But then suddenly it reversed and she started menstruating, she started leading a normal life. Very, very rare. It is God's miracle. We don't know why this happens, how it happens. It was probably just a misdiagnosis or just an overdiagnosis. So the treatment of ovarian failure would be symptomatic. Whatever you are suffering from, osteoporosis, you consult an orthopedic surgeon, heart problem, you go to a uh, cardiologist, uh, vaginal problems, uh, brain problems, uh, concentration problems, all these need to be treated and you will be put on HRT, that's hormone replacement therapy, just like a patient of a normal woman suffering from menopausal symptoms. And this treatment might not last life long, it might be just a couple of years, just like what happens in a menopausal lady, initial 2-3 years are difficult because she suddenly has those symptoms and once the life cycle is down, the symptoms come down and then she gets uh, used to her symptoms. So this is what happens in premature ovarian failure. You do not need to be on continuous treatment, but yes, hormonal treatment may be required. So the last point, how will you prevent it? Well, there is nothing that you can do if it is a genetic cause. Really, you cannot do anything. It is in your genes. But you can protect yourself from environmental toxins, try and consume um, healthy food, lead a healthy, healthy lifestyle, do exercise but do not overdo it because excessive exercise, excessive stress can also lead to premature ovarian failure. Um, try to uh, get enough sleep, stay away from stress. If you are suffering from some disease, metabolic disease or um, say cancer or whatever disease, just do not ignore the instructions of a doctor. Go to the doctor, take your treatment properly, lead a healthy life, eat healthy, drink healthy, uh, exercise daily, routinely as much as your body can uh, basically tolerate and just stay happy. I think that is the moral of the story every time I tell you. So that is it and you do not need to know more than this. If you have any more questions, you can always inbox. I will try and answer most of them in my live session. So bye-bye, take care. I'll be back again with a new video next week. Thank you very much and take care.